is only a simpler case where the exterior thing meets one actual entity at the moment in question. With what lot of explosively concerned with is the notion of the self-identity of the one enduring physical body which lasts for years, or for seconds, or for ages.
emotions and terminating in a definite, complex continued feeling. The actual must be that all actual things are like objects, enjoying objective immortality and fashioning creative action, and that all actual things are subjects, each pretending the universe from which. ATCF Part 3 CH T Back in Form 57 It Arises The creative action of the universe always becoming one in a particular unity of self-experience and thereby adding to the multiplicity which is the universe of many. Consistent in presence in the unity is the outcome of the ultimate self-identity of the entity. No entity be it, universal, or, in particular, can play this joint role. Self-identity requires that every entity have one conjoint, self-consistent function, whatever be the complexity of that function. Section 7. There is another side of law, which is the doctrine of power. Doctrine is a better illustration of this admirable adequacy than of this consistency. There is no escape from human demonstration that no such doctrine is compatible with this purely sensationalist philosophy. The establishment of such a philosophy, though derivative from Locke, is not his explicit purpose. Every philosophical school in the course of its history requires two presiding philosophers. If one of them under the influence of the main doctrines of the school should survey experience with some adequacy put inconsistently, the other philosopher should reduce the doctrines of the school to a limited consistency, which will thereby affect the reductio ad absurdum. No school of thought has performed its full service to philosophy until these men have appeared. In this way the school of sensationalist empiricism derives its importance from Locke and Hume. Locke introduces his doctrine of power as follows to 21, 1 to 3 T. How God, the mind being ninety every day in form, by the senses, of the alteration of those simple ideas it observes and thinks about, and taking notice how one comes to an end and ceases to be, and another begins to exist which was not before, reflecting also on what passes within itself, and observing a constant change of its ideas, sometimes by the impression of outward objects on the senses, and sometimes by the determination of its own choice, and concluding, from what it has so constantly observed in a bin, that the life changes for the future be made in the same things by like agents, and by the like ways, considers in one thing the possibility of having any of its simple ideas change, and in another the possibility of making them change, and so comes by that idea which we call power. Thus we say, fire has a power to melt gold, and gold has a power to be melted. In which in bed like cases, the power we consider is in reference to the change of perceivable ideas, for we cannot observe any alteration to be made in our operation upon anything but by the observable change of sensible ideas, nor conceive any alteration to be made, but by conceiving and changing some of it. Ideas. Power thus considered as twofold, is, as able to make, 
Communism, passing beyond lots of stupid statement, the notion of a real constitution is taken to mean that the eternal object function by introducing the multiplicity of actual entities is constituted of the actual entity in question. Thus the constitution is real, because it assigns its status in the real world to the actual entity. In other words, the actual entity, in virtue of being what it is, is also where it is. It is somewhere because it is some actual thing with its correlated actual world. This is the direct denial of the Cartesian doctrine, an existing thing which requires nothing but itself in order to exist. It is also inconsistent with Aristotle's phrase, neither asserted of a subject nor present in a subject. I am certainly not maintaining that Locke grasps explicitly the influence. 60. Discussions and Applications Cations of this word was thus developed for the philosophy of organism.
that things exist in the confusion of mere potentiality with actuality. Continuity concerns what is potential, whereas actuality is purely atomic. This misapprehension is promoted by the neglect of the principle that, so far as physical relations are concerned, temporary events happen in causal independence of each other. Point one, this principle will have to be explained later, in connection with an examination of process and of time. It receives an exemplification in the character of our perception of the world as a temporary actual entity. That contemporary world is objectified 96 verses, real it is objective illustrating their extension with its various parts discriminated by differences of sense data. TV's qualities, such as colors, sounds, bodily feelings, taste, smell, together with the perspectives introduced by essential relationships, are the relations of eternal objects whereby the temporary actual entities or elements in our constitution. This is the type of objectification which, in effect, seven of the previous chapters have been termed presentational objectification. In this way, by reason of the principle of contemporary independence, the contemporary world is objectified first under the aspect of passive potentiality. The very sense data by which its parts are differentiated are supplied by antecedent states of our own bodies, and so is their distribution in contemporary space. Our direct perception of the contemporary world is thus reduced to extension, defining by our own geometrical perspective, and the possibility of mutual perspectives for other contemporary entities. What this principle lies on the surface is the fundamental Einsteinian formula for the physical continuum. 61. Discussions and Applications 62. Inter A and B Possibilities of Division These possibilities of division constitute the external world of continuum. For a continuum is divisible, so far as the contemporary world is divided by actual entities, it is not a continuum but is atomic. Thus the contemporary world is perceived with its potentiality for extensive division, and not in its actual atomic division. The contemporary world is perceived by the senses as the datum for contemporary actuality, and is therefore continuous divisible but not divided. The contemporary world is in fact divided and atomic, being a multiplicity of definite actual entities. These contemporary actual entities are divided from each other, and are not themselves divisible into other contemporary actual entities. This antithesis will have to be discussed later D. Part 4. It is necessary to adumbrate it here. This limitation of the way in which the contemporary actual entities are relevant to the formal existence of the subject in question is the first example of the general 97 principle that objectification relegates into irrelevant or into a subordinate relevance the full constitution of the objectified entity. The real component in the objectified entity is the role of being how that particular entity is a data in the experience of the subject. In this case, the objectified contemporaries are only directly relevant to the subject in their character of arising from a datum which is an extensive continuum. They do, in fact, atomize this continuum, but the aboriginal potentiality, which they include and realize, is what 
diverse determinations of one extensive continuum. This extensive continuum is one relational complex in which all potential objectifications find their needs. It underlies the whole world. Thank you.
have had an obscure grasp of this argument. But the introduction of motion brings in relevant detail. The trick difficulty is to understand how the arrow survives the lapse of 2 cf. Mind science and the modern world. Thank you.
on other bodies with the former is compared, that by their giving way, that relation may be changed, in which the relative breath or motion of this other body did consist. The effects which distinguish absolute from relative motion are the forces of retaining from the axis of circular motion. For there are no such forces in a circular motion purely relative, but in a true and absolute circular motion. They are greater or less, according to the quantity of motion. Wherefore relative quantities are not the quantities themselves, whose names they bear, but those sensible measures of them either accurate or inaccurate, which are commonly used instead of the man. Such length from moving sodium, this document constitutes the clearest, most definite, and most influential statement among the thus 111 one speculations of mankind, speculations of a type which first assumed scientific importance with the Pythagorean school preceding and inspiring Plato. Newton is presupposing four types of entities which he does not discriminate in respect to their actuality. For him minds are actual things, bodies are actual things, absolute durations of time are actual things, and absolute places are actual things. He does not use the word, actual, but he is speaking of matter of fact, and he puts them all on the same level in that respect. and arbitrary schema. Relationships between shapes of interstate, between durations of interstate, and between minds, bodies, times and places, for the conjunction of them all into the solidarity of the one universe. For the purposes of science it was an extraordinarily clarifying statement, that is to say, for all the purposes of science within the next 200 years, and for most of its purposes since that period. But, as a fundamental statement, it lies completely open. 72. Discussions and Applications
itself. The former example is mathematician. The extensive continuum. Section ID 73. Even in his description of space and time has confused what is mere potentiality with what is actual fact.
life may be imaginary, we are bound at the same time to confess that there are at some other objects yet more simple and more universal, which are real and true. And indeed, all these images and things which dwell in our thoughts, whether true and real, are false and fantastic, are forms. Descartes claims for his body, an association beyond the mere sense perception of the contemporary world, these hands and feet are mine. In the philosophy of organism, this immediate association and the recognition of them as distinguishable data through formal constitutions are immediately felt in the origination of experience. In this function of principles of philosophy, Part 1, 52, 7, 76, Discussions and Applications Animal body does not differ in principle from the rest of the past actual world, but it does differ in an intimacy and association by reason of which its spatial and temporal connections obtain some definition in the experience of the subject. What is made for the rest of the world has obtained some additional measure of distinctness for the bodily organ. But, in principle, it would be equally true to say, in the actual world is mine. Descartes also asserts that speech objects yet more simple and more universal, which are real and true, are what the T images of things are which. Well, T in our thoughts, T are formed us. This does not seem to accord with this theory of perception, of a later date, stated in this principle, Part 4, 196, 197, 198. In the later theory, the emphasis is on the judicium, in the sense of inference, and not in the sense of inspectio of real it is objective us. But it does accord with the organic theory, that the objectification of other actual occasions form the given data from which an actual loads of 118 scion originates. He has also brought the body into its immediate association with the actual experience. Descartes, with Newton, assumes that the extensive continuum is actual in the full sense of being an actual entity. But he refrains from the additional material bodies which Newton provides. Also in his efforts to guard the representative pity from the fatal gap between mental symbol and actuality symbolized, he practically, in some sentences, expresses the doctrine of objectification here put forward. Thus, hence the idea of the sun will be the sun itself existing in the mind, not indeed formally, as it exists in the sky, but objectively, i.e. in the way in which objects are wont to exist in the mind, and this 